This is KGW News at Sunrise. I yelled to my buddy to call 911 and then I grabbed a hose and started trying to spray down their house. That man lives right next to a scene of a huge fire near the airport last night that started with a stack of pallets and then spread to a nearby home. We're going to have more on that fire and several others that happened around the area yesterday and last night. Thanks for joining us this morning here on Sunrise. I'm Drew Carney. Our top story this morning, though, remains the heat. So we have team coverage on that. We have John Adams covering cooling centers around the area. So we'll hear from John in just a moment. But first, Chris McGinnis, we want to check in with you in the Weather Center for the latest on our weather impact alert. 92 degrees yesterday at PDX, and we think that number goes up by a good seven to nine degrees today. Right now we are sunny and uh, we're off to a warmer start this morning than yesterday at this time. The weather impact alert is for the excessive heat warning that remains in effect now through 8 p.m. on Monday. So that's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and there is the distinct possibility that has to be extended another day. So just be aware of that, that this is going to be a long duration of high heat. 63 out there right now. Elsewhere across the region, we're in the upper 50s in Hillsborough, 57 in Tigard, 61 downtown. Salem, yesterday you were 94. You're starting the day at 61, so already a little warmer uh, at the onset than yesterday at this time. I've got Portland in the upper 80s at lunchtime and finishing right around 100 degrees. The range today will probably be about 97 to 102 in the Willamette Valley. I've got Portland at 100 and probably warmer tomorrow. We'll look at that part of your forecast and when we can expect some relief in my seven day in just a few minutes. Well, because of that forecast, Chris, a state of emergency is in place in Multnomah County. Cooling centers open up around the county starting at noon today. John Adams is live at one of those locations for us this morning. Hey there, John. Hey Drew, good morning. Uh, this church right behind me is going to open up at noon today with food and water for people that need it. Oftentimes when you think about these extreme heat events, we talk about the people that are outside. But when you look back at that heat dome in 2021, a majority of people who died were older than 60 inside and without air conditioning. So cooling options are important across the board. Multnomah County plans to open three cooling sitters on the city's east side. One is near the airport. Another one is in Gresham. They're staffed by government and nonprofit workers offering food and water to anyone who needs it. A warning for everyone to check on their neighbors, especially those who don't have AC, and to make a plan to stay cool. Dr. Caroline King, a physician with Kaiser Permanente, says the heat is serious. Heat exhaustion can escalate to heat stroke when your body can no longer regulate its own temperature. If you're not feeling well and you've been outside for a long time, you really need to seek a cool area, you know, drink lots of fluids, not necessarily just water. You want to replenish your uh, hydration with water, but also electrolytes. Clark, Washington and Clackamas counties will also be opening cooling centers today and into the weekend. For a full list of locations, head over to our website, KGW.com. Drew. All right, John Adams reporting for us here this morning. We'll have more from him coming up in our next half hour. Here's another way to look for local cooling centers. You can actually text the word heat to that number on your screen. It's 503-226-5088. We'll text you back with a link that will take you to a list of spots all around the area where you can beat the heat, including local splash pads. Your home's AC is going to be working overtime this weekend, so we have some expert advice for you this morning to help your air conditioning unit run more efficiently. Clark Public Utility says that most AC systems can generally only cool a home about 20 degrees lower than what the temperature is outside. So if it's 100 degrees outside, your home's really probably only going to get down to 80 degrees. Running your thermostat at 65 in that case is basically wasting energy, and they say it'll lead to a drastic increase in your energy bills. So instead, they suggest using nature as a way to keep your home cool. So that means that in the morning, we could open windows up, have that kind of heat escape out of the house, have that cool come in. That'll offset how much that air conditioner has to work later on that day. If you don't have AC at home, or even if you do for that matter, you want to keep your shades down during the hard, uh, hottest part of the day to try to hold on to some of that cooler air as long as you can. It's also important to avoid doing things that will create excess heat in your house, like using your oven or your dishwasher. They say you should do your laundry during non peak heat hours. 
The heat is impacting many parts of the country right now, not just here in the Pacific Northwest. So coming up later today on the Today Show, they're talking about tips for a happy, healthy summer. Medical contributor Dr. Natalie Azar will discuss how to avoid things like sunburn and bug bites and overheating. That's all coming up on today at 7 o'clock. Clark County joins Multnomah, Clackamas and Washington counties officially issuing a burn ban today. The Portland Metro counties issued theirs earlier this week, so it means no fire pits, no burning yard debris. Outdoor grills are still OK to use, but fire officials are still asking people to be extremely cautious. All right, take a look at this now. Eight people are without a home after a barbecue pit fell over and caused this triplex to burn down. It happened near Montevilla Park in northeast Portland right around 915 last night. According to Portland Fire, the barbecue pit fell onto the side of that triplex, causing the building to go up in flames. Everyone, though, did get out safely, and the Red Cross is helping those people who lost their homes find a place to stay. That fire wasn't the only one that Portland crews had to respond to yesterday. A huge fire broke out near the airport around 730 last night. It started with a pile of wooden pallets and it spread to a building on Northeast 47th near Columbia Boulevard. That building eventually collapsed. Crews, though, were able to keep other nearby buildings and businesses from catching fire. This business recycles wooden pallets. There's an incredible amount of fuel on site, so we're going to be here for quite a while. Of course, I'm grateful that my building didn't burn down, but I'm, I'm sad for my neighbors. Airport firefighters also stepped in to help with this one. They brought their uh, their big rig. It has a 6,000 gallon tank attached to it. That rig is designed to extinguish airplane fires. So uh, lots of people coming in to help with that fire last night in Northeast Portland. This next video was shared by fire officials in Lake Oswego. It shows what can happen when you don't properly dispose of your fireworks. This dumpster fire uh, happened late last night at the Westlake Shopping Center. Damages there are estimated to be somewhere around $30,000. Fires crews say that used firework debris should always be soaked in water before it ever gets thrown away. From fires to an explosion, police in Beaverton shared this photo of a patrol car they say was damaged by an improvised explosive device. It happened yesterday morning around 2 a.m. while an officer was driving on 158th Avenue. That officer reported he saw a flash and then heard an explosion before the passenger window shattered. It also caused damage to the door. The officer suffered some minor injuries. There's still no word, though, on a suspect. Cities all across the area celebrated 4th of July in different ways. Some had parades, others had fireworks shows. There was also a wiener dog race at the Oregon coast, so plenty going on. We were also out for the start of the Waterfront Blues Festival yesterday. It's happening through Sunday. We caught up with some event goers who said they look forward to beating the heat again today. Stay hydrated. That's the biggest thing. Uh, right now I just hide from the sun. I'm looking for the shady spots. So it's the opposite of a cat. A cat looks for the sunny spots. But I think on days like this, the cats would even be looking for shade. I mean, personally, I am just thankful for all the sprinklers. Oh, yes. And they don't forget. Yeah, and don't forget sunscreen guys <laughs> yeah if you want to enjoy the music you got to beat the heat uh, this shot by the way taken by sunrise editor jay londonberg one of our longtime stars on the show uh, it shows the convention center towers all lit up last night in red white and blue jay took the day off today because he told me he was going to be at that uh, festival late last night very patriotic yeah checking out the music cool and then shot. the fireworks afterwards so uh yeah we survived yesterday it didn't get too hot, although into the 90s. 90s, yep. Today we really crank it Our up. Our forecast high yesterday on the Sunrise Show for yesterday was 92, and that's what we hit right on the dot. Salem hit 94. Today those numbers easily go up another 6 to 8 plus degrees. Uh, continuing our weather impact alert days. The sun is up, it is out, it is warm, warmer now than it was yesterday at this time. 63 to start. Record temps likely. Okay, so real quick, the records for today, tomorrow, Sunday, and into early next week are all in the upper 90s. So. Our forecast is for triple digit heat today. 100 or real close to it. 101 tomorrow, 104 is my forecast high for Sunday. The sun is out. The sky is clear over the entire Northwest and high pressure is very much in charge of our weather. This is the upper level uh, air pattern here uh, over the West Coast and there is a robust 
strong ridge of high pressure aloft that not only is the air mass above us getting warmer day by day, but with that high pressure that causes sinking air subsidence that also is an added warming effect to the atmosphere. So we're going to sit and sizzle under that for a couple of days. It's not until the middle parts of next week that that ridge buckles a little bit to allow some cooling influence, but we never really kick this thing out of here. So we're close enough that it's still going to be pretty warm, even at the tail end of my seven day forecast. And there are some signs that maybe it bounces back. All right, real quick, you've probably seen a lot of numbers on your app or maybe watching some of our competitors. Why you do that? I don't know. We have Portland's best forecast, right? But I wanted to break down some of the numbers and what you're seeing. Uh, this is the national blend of models. It's a composite of dozens and dozens of forecast models, and you see a lot of numbers on here. But what I want you to focus in on is that out of all those models, the most likely range of our temperatures today are anywhere from 99 to 103 or, or put better. 50% of the guidance in this super model, we'll call it, is 101 or hotter for today. So fast forward into Saturday, 101 or hotter tomorrow. The range tomorrow probably 100 to 104. Fast forward into Sunday, 50% of the guidance goes 103 or hotter. So there you go, the range Sunday, 101 to 105. And in fact, it's similar as we head into Monday as well. So with that in mind, I've got Sunday and Monday as our hottest days of this heat spell, 104, 104. 101 on Tuesday, that would be a record. And then finally, we start to see that intense ridge buckle a little bit and allow a little more cooling influence from the Pacific to kick in, and that'll take the edge off the heat, but it's still going to be warm into the middle part of next week. Let's get you out the door and give you a live look at the roads right now. And the roads, as they were yesterday, wide open. Highway 26 in Hillsboro, rolling right along out near Cornelius Pass Road. There's I-5 near the 205 interchange in Tualatin. The sun is bright. It is out. And there's not a lot of traffic out there this morning.